Are you guys ready to discover a newer brand of gaming laptops? I can hear your thoughts already. What kind of gaming laptop ships in a crate? The Origin Evo 17S. That's what kind. It's a new 12th gen gaming laptop that you probably have not heard of yet. We're going to be doing a fun unboxing for you, setting it up and taking a look into the internals, and giving you my honest and unbiased first-hand impressions, as well as a quick look at some gameplay. It has a 17-inch FHD display with a 144Hz refresh rate. It's also got the all-new i7-12700H Intel processor and an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 Ti GPU with 32 gigabytes of 4800 megahertz of DDR5 RAM. All this will cost you around $3,200. But if you click on my link and use the code in the description, you can get it for right under $3,000. This should already have your attention as that is several hundred dollars less than the competition. And for just a little more, you can add HD UV printing or laser etching with your own design to completely customize your laptop to match your own personal style. Is this laptop really worth that hefty price tag though? Let's find out. So first thing you get, it looks like we've got a nice little Origin t-shirt. That's a first. Never got a t-shirt with a laptop before. It's a uh, medium, heavy cotton. So this is probably gonna look like a muscle shirt on me. Honestly, most shirts do. The weight room is over there, or is it over there? Or maybe it's on the second level. Pretty beefy power cable, so I'm assuming the power adapter is gonna be pretty big too. So you can see here that it's a 280 watt power brick. Not quite as much power as the 330 watt power bricks from the Alienware X17 and MSI GE76, but still quite a bit of power. And then it looks like we've got a massive orange and gaming mouse pad. This thing is huge. I kind of like how thick it is too. A very squishy and soft material. Pretty high quality. And then it looks like we've got a protective laptop carrying sleeve. I'm actually pretty impressed with the amount of extras we get with this computer. All right, getting closer to the main event. Whoa, look at that. Let's go ahead and take this plastic off to get a better look at that UV printing. Wow, that looks pretty nice. You can get this with just plain black if you want to, but I think the UV printing looks pretty slick. No, they didn't sponsor me in any way. I'm allowed to say whatever I want with this computer, and it wasn't given to me either. I'm sending it back after the review. All right, let's go ahead and open her up. Very easy to open up with one finger. Wow, yeah, that is a smooth hinge. Just the right amount of stiffness. A little bit more screen wobble than what I'm used to, but if you're gonna be using it on a pretty sturdy desk, then it's not really gonna be a problem. Typing on the keyboard, the key press is actually just a little bit more shallow than I prefer, but the extra confident clickiness I think makes up for it. Pretty satisfying. I love that we have a number pad. Many of the new 17 inch laptops that I've been seeing these days are unfortunately removing the number pad. So I'm really glad to see that back here. Touchpad feels extra smooth, kind of more of a skinny and wide touchpad. I'm really digging this design with the sharper corners on the keys and the extra chiseled masculine design everywhere else. We've got a nice slick shinier material on the key keys with a softer matte black material on the chassis and palm rests, which are surprisingly not too prone to fingerprints, unlike that Razer Blade 17. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the ports. On the right side, we've got an SD card reader, two USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type A ports, and some ventilation. And then on the back side, more ventilation on both the left and the right, with one USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type C port, with Thunderbolt 4 and DisplayPort 1.4 capabilities, and the ability to charge the computer, an HDMI 2.1 port, an RJ45 Ethernet jack, and your power port. And then on the left side, a Kensington lock port, more ventilation, and a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type A port, and a dedicated microphone and headphone jack. All right, let's go ahead and crack this thing open and take a look at the internals. 
So we've got some pretty large chassis fans with a network of heat piping there in the middle. Right down here, our Corsair Vengeance DDR5 RAM. We've got two sticks of 16 gigabytes each for a total of 32. Our Gen 4 SSD drive. And over here, our removable and upgradable Wi-Fi card. And down at the bottom, our 91 watt hour battery. And two pretty average size speakers there on the sides. All right, let's go ahead and turn her on. Wow, computer that actually had some battery power. Guessing this is the performance or boost button. Whoa, what? It was already set up for me? That was kind of cool. So in this control center, we've got a bunch of different customizations to play around with. Under general settings, you can manually disable number pad and function key lock in your touchpad toggle. I keep this feature enabled because it actually does get kind of annoying when you accidentally touch the touchpad while gaming. And then under Windows devices, you can disable things like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, or maybe your webcam to make it unhackable for those of you that need some extra peace of mind. And then your dedicated GPU has your muck switch settings. Keeping it on maximizes performance, but turning it off maximizes your battery. And then performance lets you select between different performance profiles, but I found it much more intuitive to actually use this little handy performance button to cycle through those. Or if you just wanna go absolutely nuts with your fans, you can do that right here. And then SPC is for the more advanced users that wanna push this performance a little further. Be careful with these settings. And then you get just a few battery settings and some stats. And then display settings gives you just a little bit more control over your color or you can recalibrate your color if you want to. And then light settings is where all of the RGB magic happens. Honestly, not that many animations compared to what I'm used to, and they don't look as good with only four zones, but this mix animation that fades between all the colors, I think looks pretty slick. And I'm really glad that this keyboard actually has secondary key illumination, unlike the new Alienware laptops we tested. Oh, that's cool. You can also control the RGB animations on this little light bar on the front. I didn't even know this had that. And then device information just gives you a bunch of hardware info and some real-time stats. Overall, I'm liking the style and layout of this laptop. It feels like it's built well and the software is pretty easy to use. And I always love the little things like being able to unlock my computer with just my face with Windows Hello. You need a special camera with infrared capabilities in order for that to work and thankfully this one has one. Now I'm about to jump into some gameplay but keep in mind this gameplay was done before any updates. Sometimes updates actually break things, so it's always good to test new computers right out of the box. Now, if you have any questions for my full review, then please comment with them below. And if you're publicly subscribed, not only do I guarantee a response to your comment, but your comment gets replied to first. And remember, every week I do a giveaway that randomly selects someone who's interacted with this channel in some way or filled out the form in the description. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with notifications turned on to keep an eye out for that as well as staying up to date with all of my latest gaming PCs. And if you've already made the decision to purchase this computer, then please make sure to use my affiliate links in the comments and description below, as I get a small commission at no cost to you for every single purchase made. Or if you just wanna support this channel and help keep it growing and getting better and better, then please consider becoming a channel member by clicking on the join button below. So jumping into Call of Duty Black Ops 4, these are all of my pretty much maxed out settings at 1080p. Let's jump forward after we've played a bit. Oh, that was a close one. So we're looking at about 206 frames per second with 85 degrees on the GPU and 88 on the CPU. Now checking out 1440p. Oh, I'm blind. Pop, 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 pop. Oh. Bad time to reload. So we've got about 162 frames per second now and the CPU hitting around 90 degrees Celsius. Now let's check out some 4K. Yes, this specific monitor is only 1080p. I actually did all of these tests with an external monitor for this demo. 4K is just unnecessary for a laptop screen. Whoa, is that dude burning? Do, 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 do. So about 82 frames per second at max graphics settings at 4K. Not too bad. Now let's jump into Red Dead 2. Starting off at 1080p with these incredibly high graphics graphic settings. Now let's jump forward after a little bit. Man, sometimes you just gotta stand on a cliff and soak up the graphics in this game. Just beautiful. I actually come from a VFX background, so I especially appreciate incredible CGI, especially in gameplay. Now let's go get me a horsey. Whoa there, little lightning. This wild horsey does not want to be my friend. Maybe he just wants to go swimming. So 97 frames per second in HD. Now let's check out 1440p. Ooh, that carriage is nicer than my horse. I'll take that, sir. So 82 two frames per second at 1440p, not bad. Now let's see what this does maxed out at 4K resolutions. I'll take that horsey. Oh, 
His friend did not take too kindly to that. 54 frames per second. That's actually not that bad for Red Dead 2 at these graphics settings on a laptop, but for optimal gameplay, you're gonna want at least 60 frames per second. And the winner of the Amazon.com e-gift card giveaway for this week is... Thanks for watching, guys. I love you guys. God bless.